If you've ever been on a train in Japan, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, if you're in Tokyo and it's rush hour, it's gonna be way too crowded. Second, you'll notice that pretty much everyone is on their phone. And if you've caught a glimpse of someone typing on their phone, you'll notice that they're not really using the QWERTY keyboard that you're so used to. Given all the characters in the Japanese language, you might think, well, of course they need more keys, right? But is that really the case? Well, instead they're using something called the good old fashioned telephone keypad. Whoa, no, not that one. Yeah, there we go, that's the one. Now, depending on how old you are, maybe you had to slog through those days of texting your friends on your old brick cell phone or your flip phone. And in fact, Japan used to be on the cutting edge when it came to cell phone technology, at least until Apple and Samsung took over. So my theory is that the influence of these old flip phones still have a lasting impact on how Japanese people interact with their phones to this day. But anyway, how the heck do we go from this to this? And is it even faster to type like this? Well, because of the way the Japanese language is organized, it works surprisingly well with this 10 key layout. The flanking keys on the left and right side are function keys. The right side has your backspace followed by spacebar and enter key. If you type something, they will change to a different function, which I will explain later. The ones that you should care about on the left are the ABC toggle for switching to the alphabet 10 key and dial pad. Below the toggle is emojis. On to where the typing actually happens. How do these 10 characters and strange symbols here allow us to type potentially thousands of characters? So here is a quick demonstration. Okay, so if you can't read it, I basically just typed don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying this video. So you'll notice that the speed isn't really that bad when it comes to this keyboard. So in a bit, I will race myself typing on the Japanese QWERTY keyboard, but let's break down what just happened first. So each one of the top nine characters here represents not one, but five different characters. You can be old school and just tap through the different options as they come up but all the cool kids type by swiping. If you're just making the switch to typing on this kind of keyboard, then it will take a little bit of time to memorize which character is in which direction from each key. If you hold down on any of the keys, it will show you the five different options for them. If you know Japanese, you know that you can add these little 1010 10 or dash marks above some characters to create voice consonants. And sometimes you need a smaller size character. For example, when you're making glide sounds. So when you start typing, this bottom left button will switch to a multi-function key that will add the 1010 10 or change the size of the character depending on what the character is. Now, while we're on the bottom row, I'll explain the rest. The middle button has the characters wa, o, n, and the long dash line used for the long vowels in katakana. Now, the button on the right has all your commonly used punctuation. So you'll be using this at least once per sentence. Finally, the left side has one more trick up its sleeve. So before you type anything, it shows this smiley face. And if you press on it, it will show you hundreds of different ASCII faces. So these are kind of the, the OG emojis before emojis were a thing. This running guy here, he's one of my favorites. We're almost done here, but last but not least is the prediction bar on the top of the keyboard. So it starts out blank, but just like English, once you start typing out a word, it will show you predictions for both auto-completing the words, as well as alternative words or characters that have the same sound. And this happens a lot in Japanese. So this prediction bar is where all the magic happens because this is how you switch between using hiragana, katakana, and kanji. And you can do it all at once even. It's not perfect, but it is pretty dang good at guessing what you're trying to type, and you just need to tap the top bar for whichever selection that you want to choose. The previously space bar becomes a button to go to the next candidate, and the enter key becomes a kakte or confirmation button. This is usually only useful if you want to keep what you've typed in hiragana only, rather than choose one of the predicted candidates, which you'll be doing most of the time. Oh, and as an addendum, any other symbols that you need, you can find through using the ABC and one, two, three toggles in combination with using the prediction bar. 
So that was a crash course on how to use the Japanese 10 key keyboard layout. I actually made a point of switching to this keyboard layout after I came to Japan and I realized that pretty much everyone is using it. It was a part of my immersion experience of learning the Japanese language, and I've actually been using it for several years up to this point. But obviously, I've been typing on a regular QWERTY keyboard for my entire life, and when I type on a computer in Japanese, I always type with the keyboard and Romanji conversions. So let's find out if I really am faster at typing on the 10 key keyboard layout, or if I've just been wasting my time all these years. Alright, so it seems like I was around the same speed, which is kind of what I was expecting. Even with years of use, I think I reached a skill ceiling on the 10 key keyboard layout about a year after I started using it. And while I'm not the fastest person, I, I haven't really put special effort into trying to speed up how fast I type. On the other hand, QWERTY keyboard typing is something I've been doing for 20 plus years, and I, I like to think that I'm kind of fast. But what advantages does the 10 key keyboard layout have over the alternative? So a few things come to mind. First of all, I do think it is superior in one hand use. And especially since swipe style predictive typing is not an option for QWERTY Japanese keyboards. The one handed advantage certainly is a plus when you find yourself in those packed train cars trying to send a message. The other advantage to those learning Japanese is that it forces you to internalize the writing system a bit more since this method of typing has no dependence on English phonetics and trying to spell out words with romanji, which can be a bad habit for some people. But other than that, I don't think there are other major advantages to be gained from using the 10 key keyboard layout but it could be an interesting change of pace if you are a Japanese learner. And maybe as English skills move up in importance level in the Japanese education system, we'll see younger people start shifting towards the Romanji keyboard more, as this is already common for computer keyboards. But for now, I think this is still the dominant form of typing on a smartphone for Japanese people. Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts about either typing method or if you want to try it out yourself. And if you want to see a video about typing on a Japanese computer, let me know. See you next time.